Hello everyone, Zoe Trepic here and welcome to this, the very first video that's actually going to treat, albeit tangentially, on my transition. So um, if you're not interested in that sort of thing, feel free to run for the door, it's behind me. And uh, for those of you who are actually staying, um, well don't worry, it's not going to be a full-blown transition update because for one thing, I started my transition two years ago. So, uh, for people starting de novo, um, there's going to be a lot of information to take on board. If you're one of my friends, then you already know some of the stuff, so uh, the update for you would be smaller. So, that's one aspect, and another is that I just haven't decided precisely how much information I want to share, or at least how much I want to go into details in each aspect of my transition. So, I'm going to buy myself a little time to think about that, and um, hopefully, by... By the two-year, the actual legit two-year um, mark, um, I can come back to you with a full-on update. So that will be in May because basically I um, I de-stealthed, which is to say I stopped hiding from my friends, and, uh, colleagues, and so forth that I was trans in um, around my birthday in 2017. So yeah, we're coming up on the two-year anniversary soon, so I guess it would make sense to do a video then about all of it. I see again, just as I sit down to do this video, that's when the sun comes out to absolutely ruin it and make me look horrific. So thanks clouds, thanks sun. Basically, I live in Britain, and of course the impression most people probably have of the UK is, wow, it's all blighty, it's cloudy, rain, fog, it depends on like what century you're talking about. Um, but basically, yeah. And unfortunately, uh, it's not entirely true. Uh, we do get sun, sun a lot, as you can see in these videos. And it comes and it goes, but mainly it comes while I'm trying to do one of these videos and trying to look at least remotely nice. Um, I realize it's a bit of a push, but I try. And uh, and so whatever, it's just gonna totally um, shed it, uh, scupper all that for me. So that's super helpful. I'm gonna try not let it uh, contribute further to my gender dysphoria. I'm just gonna crack on with the video. But yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do today is just take you through a little anecdote about my recent trip up to Newcastle. And um, this was the video that I had planned to make basically before the trip. Um, I think I mentioned it in my last to camera video. I'm like, going, I'll do a video to test the new format, blah, blah, blah. Because I thought there was something that's interesting to talk about that's kind of bearing upon one of the topics. Well, the topic was the, um, the transition, the LGBTQ uh, stuff. And so, yeah. Um, this is now going to be all past tense, referring to uh, my trip to Newcastle rather than future tense. I'm going to be going and I'm worried about these things, but I'll kind of like try and give you a pricey of like the whole thing. So what I was worried about as I was planning the trip up to Newcastle is unlike my existence, my day to day existence here, I live in the south of England and uh, everybody down here knows um, about my transition. So. There's no one I have to avoid or be careful what I say to and this sort of thing. I um, I just go out and live my normal day-to-day -day life. And if I'm out shopping and I need to use the toilet, I go to the women's loo because obviously I'm a woman. And I've never been accosted or verbally or physically abused uh, in the toilets in Britain because, well, unlike some countries we could name, I'll go on, I'll name a country. How about the United States where um, uh, trans women and trans men, no doubt, uh, are routinely accosted in toilets by people who've decided to police their gender. And uh, in some cases, certainly in the case of um, trans women, a lot of them experience like other cisgender women in the toilet who will call their boyfriends or their husbands to come beat the crap out of this woman who's just trying to use the toilet and wash her hands because that's society and civilized behavior, but whatever. Um, in the UK, it's not been that bad. Um, like I said, I've never experienced violence or even verbal abuse in a toilet. Uh, I've had some strange looks occasionally, but people just kind of like get on with it. I think people can like put two and two together and they're like, oh, trans women. And they just move on with their lives because that's how a rational person deals with the existence of another person. Um, but yeah, some people feel the need to uh, attack. And I'm glad I don't live in a country where I'm at high risk of being like murdered for being trans. Um, but yeah, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. It's very it's getting a bit dark already, uh, unlike the freaking illumination from the sun outside. So let's get back on topic. Um, Newcastle is unfortunately, it's a place that we used to live, uh, my wife and I. And um, some of the people who know me from that period 
do not know that um, I've transitioned. And it's not because I didn't want to say, it's because, um, well, I'm not going to go into it, but there's reasons why basically we, Rebecca and I, have reached a decision not to tell them. And so what this means is when I know that I'm going to have to interact with them, if I go up on a visit, I don't go up very often to Newcastle anymore, but if I do, I have to dress in boy mode. So I have to wear clothes that I, I don't even own enough of those clothes anymore. I'm really, literally when I was packing for this trip, I'm like going, crap, can I even put together an outfit that looks remotely male? But um, anyway, um, so I have to like pretend uh, to be a guy and uh, well, I have to put on my old voice, which I'm not going to do on the video. We'll see maybe in a future video if you really want to know like uh, what I've been doing to try and change my voice. I can give you a sample, but uh, not today. So yeah, um, I got to do like a lot of stuff and it's really um, awkward and uncomfortable because obviously um, I don't like being fake. Like this, this is me and so having to go back to a thing I had to do for decades of my life, pretending to be a guy and kind of fit in and pretend like, oh yeah, I know exactly what you mean. These jokes are funny. Um, this sort of crap uh, is just, it's painful actually, but that's not what I'm gonna talk about because that's aside from, from all that. I remember what it was like to do that pretense and I remember what playing that game was like. So I can actually drop into that if I have to and uh, act like a guy. Um, the problem was, is I knew that there was going to be one logistical uh, snag, which is, um, obviously, I'm not going to take a series of coach journeys up to, to the north of England dressed as a guy, especially since my tickets have my, my current legal name in them. All of my ID has my current legal name. Uh, it's not a male name. So, um, yeah, I was going to make myself uncomfortable for like an eight-hour journey or more with any campus stopovers uh, in Leeds just for the sake of like arriving in Newcastle looking like a guy. So I knew that I was going to get to Newcastle at the end of a long day's journey, uh, an uncomfortable one because coach journeys are just like a bit dreadful, but they are affordable, so that's good. Um, and I was going to have to find a place to change clothes, like my entire outfit. Obviously you can't just do that out in public, uh, public indecency laws. So I figured I'd find a public toilet and go in and do this. But the problem is, is that it means that you go into a toilet presenting as one gender and you come out of the toilet presenting as a different gender. And this bathroom dance uh, is something I've been dreading ever since I realized I was going to have to do it. I don't know why it didn't occur to me before. Like I've been planning this trip to Newcastle. I had to go up there for a reason. And I know it was going to happen for like a month. And somehow it didn't occur to me until like a week or so before. It's like, wait a second, this is going to be a really, really awkward situation. So yeah, I, I packed a suitcase. Oh great, I can't center on the camera, but a suitcase. And most of what was in the suitcase was um, changes of clothes. So to perform this kind of dance. I mean, yeah, there were some presents in it for the friends I would be staying with who do know that I'm, I've transitioned. But they have a little daughter that... Um, that I haven't met, and um, and so I didn't want her first impression of me to be one of confusion as I walk in dressed as a guy and then say, excuse me, while I nip to the loo and freshen up and then you know, come out looking like this. So um, I knew that I was gonna have to do two changes, like literally I had to get to Newcastle, find a public toilet, change to look like a guy, go do the things I have to do with the people who don't know that I've transitioned, go back, find another public toilet, change back to look like a girl, and then go visit my friends and stay with my friends and do all that sort of thing. So, um, I knew there was going to be two chances for bad things to happen. And, uh, spoiler alert, one, one of those two times bad things happened. Um, so I basically was like going, okay, where do I, where do I do this? What's the biggest, what's the best public toilet to use? Because I figured that's the only place that you actually, you go out of sight, you're allowed to kind of take some of your clothes off because you want to use the toilet. So I was just going to take a few more of my clothes off and change. And um, I just needed one big enough that people weren't going to be monitoring the entrance and the exits because um, perhaps you've noticed in your life that uh, if couples go out together and one of them needs to use the loo, like at the cinema or something like that, and the other one just says, oh, I'll just wait outside for you, that whoever's waiting outside is kind of like 
eagle-eyed watching the door the whole time. It's like every time someone comes up, they look at me. Every time someone comes out, they look up to see, is it, is it, is it my spouse? Is it my partner? Is it my, my boyfriend, my girlfriend? Well, in the case of uh, the women's loos, there's almost always a few men uh, waiting outside, kind of looking, watching to see, if, is their partner going to come out? And uh, of course, because they're watching for that, they're watching people going in as well. So what I needed is one of those kinds of things where you go down a corridor and then just at the very end you split. So it's not like where the doors are out, out here where, where we're like, I'll step out and literally be confronted with some guy who's like, what are you doing coming out of the women's loo? So um, that was a bit of a problem. So I said, okay, I can find one. So I went to the biggest shopping center in New Newcastle, in central Newcastle. And I figured this is a safe bet. It's a big, busy shopping mall. There's gonna be people going in and out of the toilets all the time. Nobody's going to be standing around waiting. There's not one of these awkward positions to go to. So um, I thought I'd do that, but at first I couldn't find them. I'm like going, wow, this shopping center is actually quite large. I'm just looking for the nearest public toilets, you know? And so I couldn't find them. I'm like going, okay, I just, I don't want to waste more time because I knew my friends were waiting for me to get to them as soon as I got done with all the, the business I had to do south of the time. So I'm like going, I got to speed this up. So I saw there was a department store uh, called Phoenix. And so I said, oh, that'd be okay. I'll just go in there. I'll go to where the toilets are. Probably fewer people in this place, so it won't be a problem. There probably won't be, if I get like the women's uh, new clothing department, they'll probably be changing hers. There won't be many guys around. So I'll just go do that. Well, that was a mistake. Um, it turns out that um, the Phoenix uh, women's uh, toilets are very posh. <laughs> I, I don't know how to describe it otherwise. You go in and instead of it like you go in and um, kind of going in, coming around the corner and there's like all the, you know, all the stalls and the, and the sink and everything. It's actually sort of a, a changing and makeup area. So literally you come around the corner and there's this room with about 10 cushy seats in a circle or in a semicircle with mirrors and lights set up and like makeup stations. And basically there's a lot of women just kind of doing themselves up. And then you have to pass through that area to get to actually where the toilets are. <laughs> so I'm like going, Okay, I've chosen poorly. I'm uh, definitely not going to go pass through this gauntlet, go into a stall, change, and come out looking like a guy, and have all these women say, what the hell are you doing? So I, I kind of legged it. And so I'm back down in the shopping center again going, okay, right, I do need to find somewhere to change. Time is getting on. And I eventually located the, um, like, sort of the, one of the main free toilets, free, uh, free bathrooms uh, in the shopping center. And I'm like going, okay, this, this looks legit. This is just going to be a standard toilet. It's all good. The, the men go this way, women go this way. So I kind of like paired off. I go in and as I come in the toilet, I'm like going, okay, I'm sizing it up. There's like maybe 10 stalls. I'm going, okay, this is, it's a little small, but that's fine. Women doing their things. Obviously I'm dressed like this. Well, not, not this exact outfit, but you get the idea. And I'm like thinking, okay, right, I'll just go to a stall, do the stuff. And I did notice as I come in that there's sort of a attendant not like someone who's stationed there, but someone who look, looks like janitorial staff. Like there's a woman who basically looks like she's tidying things up and just, you know, sweeping the floor, that sort of thing. But that's perfectly normal. So I don't even note that. I just kind of go into a stall, close the door, lock it. So I'm like, going, okay, I got to hurry here. So I put the suitcase down, zipping it open. I'm like, okay, let's see, I got this. This is a change of clothes. I got to do this. And I'm, I'm going as quickly as I can, but I, I'm not Clark Kent. I can't just walk into a phone booth and come out looking like Superman. So it's taking me a little while. And I think I was probably, by best estimate, in there six minutes, seven. Um, it wasn't forever. It wasn't an unreasonable time for someone to be in a toilet stall, especially if, say, you had constipation or something and were having trouble. Uh, not that that was the trouble I was having. I was trying to quickly change clothes. So, um... This has never happened to me, by the way. I hear the, the, the toilets, like the activity. I mean, at the start, the, the first few minutes, like people are coming and going, and I hear people coming to the stalls next to me and changing and then going out again. And then it gets quieter, and it gets quieter, and I'm finally, I'm almost done changing to look like a guy. I got my outfit on, and I hear just outside my stall the attendant, I mean, I don't, I assumed it was the attendant's voice, but I heard a walkie-talkie. I kind of like, security to the women's toilet, please. And my blood just ran cold. I mean, I'm going, fuck. Um, so yeah, basically at this point, I'm in a blind panic because there's no time to change back into the clothes that I entered the, uh, the toilet in. And the fact that I don't hear any other women, so I know it's just this kind of, this attendant, He's phoning security and is standing right outside my stall. 
and my mind's just racing like on could it be anything else could it be something else maybe maybe she's seen graffiti but why would you call security if she's seen graffiti in the stall like no it's it's me it's obvious that she's she's concerned she's standing outside my stall and is concerned that someone has gone in six minutes later hasn't come out maybe she just thinks i'm like i don't know shooting up or something i don't know but obviously um there's a chance that I was clocked coming in because I obviously didn't um, pass. And so maybe she's just decided to call security so that I will have this really awkward conversation as I step out dressed as a guy um, to have to explain why I'm doing this. And it's like, well, yes, I'm still allowed to use this toilet because I'm actually a woman. Yes, I know I'm dressed as a guy. There's a reason for this. There's nothing dodgy going on. And all I could think was, holy shit, I've got to get the fuck out of here. So um, what I did is like throwing clothes <laughs> in the suitcase, sipping it up, and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna open the door, and if, if she's standing there to confront me, she, she's not security herself, I'm just gonna say, sorry, I'm in, I'm in a hurry, gotta go, I'm just gonna, like, literally scarp her, um, but she wasn't looking at, I opened the door, and she's standing literally right outside, and she's kind of looking down, like, at my feet, and I, I can work out that she'd been looking under the door and saw my suitcase, but I wasn't the only person going through the shopping center with a suitcase, um, but yeah, she doesn't actually raise her eyes to make eye contact, but she doesn't step aside either. So I kind of just sidle past her, and obviously I'm not going to wash my hands or anything. I'm like literally thinking security is on their way. And so um, so I like go out the door, and there's like nobody outside. So fortunately, the, the whole reason I chose the toilet was actually vindicated in the sense that like there wasn't a line of guys going, where's my wife? Is she coming out? No. So I come out, and I just go down the hall, go to the stairs rather than the lifts, and just like Get, get out of there. So um, the good news is I didn't actually encounter security, but as I had seen as I was leaving the toilets, there was not a single other woman in the toilets. It gives me the feeling that maybe as women were trying to come in, like the attendants, like, um, just go out here. And then she decided to wait as soon as everybody was gone, she decided to phone security. So yeah, it was not going to be a good situation had I stayed. Um, so um, I'm just sorry, I'm drew all my gesticulation. The, uh, the necklace is going everywhere. But yeah, so, oh my god, um, got out of, El, uh, out of the shopping center and did all my stuff, uh, all the stuff I had to do that involved, like, presenting as male, uh, lowering my voice and doing all of that, and uh, fortunately, that went smoothly, uh, nobody even recognized, nobody sees any difference, like, literally, people see what they expect to see, and so, in the case of, if I go dressed as a guy and they've only known me from before my transition, and I use my old voice, yeah, there was like, they didn't twig at all. It's all like perfectly normal. So that all happened. <clears throat> and then I'm like going, okay, I want to go visit my friends now and depressurize because this has been very stressful. And um, they're waiting for me. I'd already had a text from um, one of my friends. Uh, they're in North, Time, uh, North Shields um, on the north side of the time. And basically saying, are you still coming? I'm like, oh, yes, yes, I'm still coming. I'm just a little behind. Um, so I'm thinking, I can't get back to the shopping center, because right now I can just imagine, like, they've got security guards with their guns, you know. Um, I don't think security guards have guns in the UK, so don't worry about that. But um, I'm, uh, I'm doing this for, uh, for amusing effect. So I'm thinking, I can't get back there. Um, where can I go where I could just change back safely without being accosted or having security called on me? And um, Rebecca, sorry, my wife had suggested that maybe... Uh, I could do the train station. Now the train station has been very convenient because you actually have to break your journey at the train station and then resume your journey so it delays you further. But I wasn't going back to the shopping center in the center of town so I'm like okay fine I'll go to the train station. I'll like try and be as fast as I can, do the change, hopefully catch the next train. Uh, sorry it's the metro so it's like a think if you're in the US think the subway system. So the Newcastle has its sort of yeah, subway and, um, and I'll just get to North Shields as fast as I can. So yeah, I go to the train station, I go all the way down to the end, like past the platform areas, and um, I'm looking to see if, like, does it look like this is going to be a threat? If they're much smaller, there's like literally just a few facilities for people who are like, you know, haven't got on the trains where they have the toilets as well. And I kind of take a look in, seems fine, so I kind of like, awkwardly, obviously dressed as a guy, walk in, and like, okay, I see like two attendants, I'm like, oh no, God, not this again. But they were sitting in sort of side rooms, so like as you kind of head towards the toilets, there's a side little room that the kind of bathroom attendants can sit in. 
but they were kind of chatting so I just kind of went by and then like zoop into the women's uh walk through and there's like two men washing their hands and they don't look up and I'm like just I just need to get in the stall before either of them looks up get in the stall close the door I'm like oh, okay thank god so at this point I'm just like okay zip unzip the suitcase and doing everything in reverse getting back you know obviously to how I normally look and um I'm listening just in case anything's happened but nothing's happened and so I come out this time I can actually wash my hands and everything, freshen up, and I kind of like walk out and I cast a sidelong glance at the two attendants sitting in the side room as I go by to see if like, they're going, wasn't that the same person who just walked in there like looking dressed differently? But they don't, they don't look up, nothing exciting happens. It's not a Hollywood film. So I just get the hell out and I go visit my friends. So, okay, that's the end of the anecdote. But um, this is just to give uh, those of you who are cisgender who, haven't had to experience the, the joys of um, just using a toilet uh, as a transgender person. I mean, this ad admittedly is not a typical anecdote because typically it's just you go in presenting as, as, your, uh, as your gender and um, people either have a problem with it because they don't think you pass or they don't notice, in which case it's fine, but you always have that worry um, kind of in the back of your mind is like, is today gonna be the day that bad things happen? And obviously it's scarier in other countries, like the US is much scarier than the UK for transgender people. And uh, there are countries that are scarier and more dangerous yet. Like I think, I think the place where the most trans women are murdered each year is Brazil. I think like 200 or more um, trans women are killed in Brazil, murdered outright uh, for being trans. Um, so I probably am never gonna visit Brazil, which is a shame, I would have liked to see it, but um, no. And so, um, yeah, I realized the UK is pretty safe and that this was kind of an extreme circumstance where I had to change because I had to do this bathroom dance for, there was no other place to change in private, uh, change clothes. But um, but this is an example of the sort of stresses that um, transgender people have to face on a daily basis. So just try and be a little sympathetic. I'm, I'm sure no one watching this channel is a dick. Um, I'm sure like all of you are kind of like, you wouldn't bat an eyelid, you wouldn't try and make, uh, someone's life hell for being trans but there are people out there who do and if you ever hear someone like making the sort of argument well they shouldn't be in there or what do they expect or they should make more effort and put on more makeup in the case of trans women or something maybe you could just kind of like clear your throat and go actually you know I know a trans girl and she's she's fine and she's told me like how it can be or you could just say it's like well I don't think it's that simple you know if you don't want to like you don't have to fight my fight for me but um it's oh. It's one of these things that it's just like most people don't realize that this is kind of the uh, the calculus that goes into day-to-day -day life for, for transgender people. So I think I've belabored that long enough, but hopefully you found this anecdote interesting. I was really not expecting it. I thought as long as I go to a bathroom that's big enough and it's being used quickly, lots of people coming and going, what could possibly go wrong? And it turns out I was wrong. Uh, things can go wrong. Security can be called on you. But, um, but in the end, it's all fine. Uh, as it turns out, just to finish off the story on a positive note, uh, I did get to my friends up in North Shields, and I arrived. Their daughter was lovely, and she was very sweet, and I gave her her present. We brought a, a book called the, um, the Little Endless, which is basically, those of you who've read Sandman, the, uh, the graphic novels, and remember the endless, like desire, destruction, death, sort of thing, delirium. Um, there's actually a book that's for children that kind of, it's quite sweet, the artwork's lovely. And it kind of just introduces them. It's a silly little story, but you know, good enough. So she loved it, so that was nice. And I had a lovely visit with them. I was able to calm down after the, the stress of the day. So it all had a happy ending. And uh, obviously I didn't have to change again when I journeyed back south again to, uh, to my home. I could just stay dressed as normal and uh, nobody batted an eyelid or said anything. So yeah, um, so this has been a trans anecdote for you. Uh, not an update. We'll get around to an update in May. Uh, I might do another of these sorts of episodes to tell you like an interesting thing that happened to me because I have some anecdotes of being trans uh, over the two years since that I've started. But um, I think this has probably gone on long enough. I have no idea as usual. I should probably set like a little watch so I can see like how long these videos go. But anyway, um, if you found this interesting or have any questions, uh, obviously not rude, but I don't think anybody's going to be rude in the comments, but please ask, you know, feel free to post it in the comments and I will respond when I see it. And, um, and yeah, I think that's probably enough. So obviously I'm gonna upload some Beat Saber videos today. I'll decide whether I upload them first or after this video, but 
at any rate, um, probably not another to camera video for another week or so, but um, we'll see. So yeah, um, thanks for watching, and hopefully this was interesting, and um, see you later. Bye-bye.